In the battle over Scottish independence, the future of North Sea oil and gas has taken centre stage today. The no camp in the Scottish referendum, taking place this autumn, says the UK would best steward the oil sector's future. The Yes campaign under leader Alex Salmond begs to differ, naturally. Well, I'm joined by our oil and gas correspondent Guy Chazan. Guy, um, I mean, the main thing is, do you think Alex Salmond has a point here that uh, an independent Scotland would better handle the future of North Sea oil and, oil and gas? Enormous investments are required and uh, in, in the remaining oil and gas fields in the North Sea. And for that investment to go ahead, uh, the, you really need a very stable fiscal and regulatory regime. And I think investors are always very wary about instability. But is this a resource that still matters? In years past it has really mattered, but it is a declining resource, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, in the 70s, um, the SNP actually uh, scored one of their most significant electoral kind of uh, results in 74, I think, when the big argument was this is Scotland's oil. North Sea oil was only just being discovered and being brought into production. And at that time, it was an incredibly hot political issue. The fact is, it's a declining resource. Uh, 40 billion barrels have been extracted. Uh, some estimates suggest that 12 to 24 billion barrels could still be extracted. But that oil is very, very difficult oil. It's uh, in incredibly complex uh, reservoirs. And so uh, the fact is that the, the actual tax take from that oil uh, is going to is going to be much more much less than it was sort of in the 70s and 80s, for but example. D despite that, I mean, UK Prime Minister David Cameron, who's in Scotland's oil heartland today himself, Aberdeen, says that he'll adopt all aspects of a recent review of North Sea oil and gas, and he says the UK basically has deeper pockets. So, despite it being difficult, surely he's got an argument there. Well, I think it is. I think it is a fair point. But on the other hand, Alex Salmon points to uh, Norway as a very good example. This is a much smaller country than Britain. Uh, which has husbanded its resources, its oil and gas resources, uh, possibly in a more sensible way than Britain has. They have a, an oil fund which they've been paying into for decades and it's huge now. So perhaps he's right that actually these revenues could be um, you know, husbanded in a, in a better way than, than the UK government has, has, has in the past. And, and, and funny, I mean, does business really care whether Scotland's independent or not? I mean, BP has voiced concerns mm. about uh, independence, yet I think it says that investments will, will remain. Exactly. So does business care? Well, I think business is quite cynical. Um, I mean, essentially, a, a lot of the people that we talk to on this subject have said, well, you know, Cameron might be saying that we have the stability and we have the broad shoulders and so on, but the UK North Sea has actually been notorious uh, for its fiscal instability over the years. In 2011, there was a £2 billion tax rate on the industry, uh, which led to a very big hiatus in investment. Basically, some companies have said that, you know, we, we talk about instability in the industry and point to places like Indonesia uh, or Venezuela, or Russia, when in fact Britain has one of the worst reputations for fiscal instability in the oil industry. So much argument con to continue about whether a tax regime under Alex Salmon would be more stable than one under the UK. David Cameron. Well, Guy Chazan, thanks very much. And um, to read more about this debate, which will undoubtedly continue as part of the overall debate on the Scottish referendum and independence, um, please go to ft.com forward slash Scotland.